Hi, I'm uh, very pleased tonight to have a friend of mine, Professor Anis Bayrektarevic, PhD, Professor of International Law and Political Relationships, Bosnian living in Vienna, Austria, from where he covers the whole world with his articles, books, and travels. Tonight, we will be talking geopolitics. Hello, Anis. Thanks for uh, being with us tonight. Uh, thank you, Sam. <clears throat> uh, thank you for inviting me and thank you for having me here with you uh, this evening. All right. Now, let's imagine this scenario. November the 3rd, 2020. You are U.S. citizen. And my question is, who would you vote for? Uh, it's it's actually it's a binary categorization and it's a simplification of the deeper of of the deeper uh, 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 let's say uh, a question or or deeper issues which are related to the political system and I think basically that I would most probably refrain from going to the polling stations first of all because there was already uh, let's say an indication that, that the elections won't be fair there was a lot of hot air a lot of threats a lot of uh, let's say, uh, accusations and contra accusations. And in a way, you, United States have got enveloped into this sort of the crisis uh, already since the surprise uh, uh, victory of, of, of uh, President Trump. Uh, I still remember very, let's say, uh, how shall I say, in a, in a mild way, a very, very, let's say, cold shower situation in the studio of uh, Al Jazeera that practically everybody was already celebrating victory of, of, um, of uh, Miss Clinton. And basically it was a, a big cold shower, a big embarrassment for, for everybody who was, and practically they were uh, nearly uh, a low level, a cheap way of cheerleading you know, it was really a little bit uh, low standard way of of, of cheerleading uh, for the for for the Democratic candidate at that time. It was a cold shower, so practically they shut the they shut the the, the, the TV program because nobody was was able to say anything of it. <clears throat> so I think since that time, actually, the the political system has uh, signaled that it came to certain, let's say, to certain moment when 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 it requires uh, rethinking and recalibration. So so this is with, what, what is with the political system in the United States. And I would come back to Fukuyama, who is a darling of United States since he was publishing his essay, uh, uh, is the uh, um, end of history. And this essay, I mean, we shouldn't forget this. This essay was uh, was actually and then it was a question mark and when he later published book because everybody was was so in Boston in, in in the East Coast you know intellectual circles of Boston of New York and Washington everybody was so happy about this so he was either either let's say uh, told or he was out of this uh, euphoria he was even skipping this question mark he said okay We've been, we've been the winners, no question mark, end of history, full stop. And even he himself, you know, some five, six ago, uh, years ago, he was coming and telling there is a contra-narrative. He understood something which Andrich was explaining in, I think it, it's Omer Pasha Lata's book, or, or uh, uh, Sarajevo Chronicles, I think this is the English version of the book. Uh, in which he says, okay, so he's looking how how at that time the Ottoman police was chasing some essentially a political, a, a rebel turned into political opponent. And then he was telling, okay, so so God, God help both of them. And God gives the wisdom to both of them, especially to the winner, because winner is getting into euphoria and is not considering that the, those that are having the heat, they start thinking of the of the things, how to improve. And the winners are getting into euphoria and they believe it's really a full stop. There is no question mark for them any longer. And Fukuyama felt it. 
so so he was he was desperately asking openly in his essays there is the contra narrative and one of the problems because I believe, including this crisis, that every crisis is a crisis of the cognitive mind. What telling, but those of us who follow this intellectual debate of, of Anglo-Americans, we, we f perfectly understood the entire narrative has been run by nine universities or circles which are based around nine universities, three in, United, uh, three in the United Kingdom and six in the United States. Everything we use as a social platform, everything we listen, everything we wear, everything we travel, everything we listen or watch, everything is basically generated by those nine centers. And one of the fundamental problems of the planet, especially now, is not what 1% is doing. Are doing or ready to, to accept. This is the fundamental problem. And again, Every crisis is nothing else but the crisis of cognitive mind. Anis, who won American presidential election? Uh, you are pushing me into that corner. Okay. Uh, look, uh, I really don't, I mean, I can, I can talk a little bit like by the drives of emotions or, or some sort of, let's say, uh, us from Yugoslavia and us who are dealing with the geopolitics, you know, we, we love balance. And I think the Yugoslavs, wherever they live, you know, they have natural code, you know, of the balance, of, 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 of taking both sides, you know, into consideration. And especially those of us dealing with the geopolitics, you know, we, we always look for the equilibrium and we are always intuitively helping the weaker one or the, or the stolen one. So, so, so if, 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 if I follow my heart, I would say it, it has been stolen. But frankly, I don't know. I, I don't know because we don't have evidences. And unfortunately, what we definitely know is that any debate about possible irregularities has been suffocated. And this is very bad news. And the lustration of the president, so-called Institute of Civic Death, in Roman Empire, of course, they had the capital punishment. They've been cruel, like any other regimes at at, at times or pre or post authentic times. But one of the institutions of the of the of the uh, criminal or penal code was: you are so filthy and so miserable. We don't want to dirt our hands with you, so we will not behead you. We will not chop your head, but we will just damn you. So you will live among us, but everybody will ignore you. And that was the insti institution of civic death. Later, Baruch Spinoza, you know, we know from philosophy, he was uh, getting into certain points which we are going against the, that time political establishment and the church or the clergy. So he was damned and he was basically suffering this civic death. And we are, what we are witnessing now is the return of the civic death. Whoever was the acting president, you know, it's deeply disturbing. It's absolutely deeply, biologically, intellectually, morally, historically, it's deeply disturbing for all of us on this planet that basically uh, companies that were switchboard providers, because, you know, Facebook is a switchboard. You have telephones and then there is a, there is a telephone central, you know, so it's a place where all those wires are coming. So the providers of the telephone switchboard, you know, these guys took such a power into their hands to judge things. And that's actually, again, it's a defeat of political system that was enabling those people to raise to power, to the financial power and to political power, to have such a say. Those people should have been arrested long ago. Next question. What was happening between November 3rd and January 20th, 2021. Uh, I think one thing is important. I, I remember I, I saw somewhere in those social networks or, or I got uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a message on, on Weber or somewhere when there was a short period, you know, when, when your good friend uh, uh, Djokovic was 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 losing a couple of of tournaments. He he lost, 
uh, uh, since I don't follow really tennis. I, I used to play tennis, but I was never sitting in front of TV and watching sports in my life. I always, I mean, I followed my father who said, okay, don't watch, do the sports. So I, I rarely watched, maybe in company, you know, in, in uh, uh, like a social event, but not really sitting, opening beer or coffee and, and watch. Anyway, so I don't know what exactly happened, but it was a, it was some bad time, you know, when he was losing. And then and then the 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 the, the Balkans, especially uh, from from neighboring Serbia, uh, who were celebrating his victories as their personal, they've been they they've been turning very bad to him. And then someone made comment, you know. Uh, why do you blame person, you know, so you should make your own achievements. Don't blame him, you know, for every defeat that you had in your life, you know. And it's a natural, you know, so you can't win all the time. There is no sunny day every day. Sometimes rain has to come. So putting this, what what what, what was actually a nice, uh, a normal wisdom of people, you know, so, so you should not delegate your winning to someone else and have a, your idol, you know, you should fix your own life because Djokovic can not fix your own life and miseries and cannot be a symbol of, of, of let's say, of... Uh, of compensation for all 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 the things you didn't uh, uh, achieve or tied up your home or achieved in your life so the same goes with the trump so finally trump is out and finally we have no excuse to sit and watch and wait someone else to fix things for us so th this is what i see as a good news you know so what was really happening was very painful and then i think to the astonishment for all people who follow in different scales and levels the political system of United States, we've been just getting the confirmation that this political system needs needs a strategic reset and needs, actually reset is a bad word, uh, needs rethinking and recalibration because this political system has come to an end. Uh, 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 presidential elections for very long were the contest of who will generate more money. The campaign was enormously expensive. And when you are raising such a fund, you know, which are basically going to hundreds of, of, of millions of dollars, you practically owe something to someone. You can't, you know, I think Obama presidency, you, you should know far better that. I think Obama was, when you see the structure of what he was generating, this was a small people money. But even that, I think, was not passing more than 60% or 50%. Bottom line, 40% of your, of your campaign, so a couple of hundreds of millions or 100 of million, you owe to a big companies. And you have to return them the favor. And this political system, since basically the United States has, has three principal organs, one is Congress, one is President, and the third is Supreme Court. So especially... You know, I, I would say also Congress runs by the same mat, uh, uh, metrics, but but it's not that much apparent as as with the presidential elections. It's basically money elect president, and this political system has come. And this bipartisanism, which is not any longer bipartisanism, is different. And now people are throwing, you know, qualifications. You are the leftist, the rightist, the Nazi, the communist. You know, those are irresponsible things. I can call myself a queen of, of uh, Uganda, you know, but nobody would accept me like that, you know. So it's not enough to say I am a socialist, I am communist, I am Nazi, you know, that actually. So your deeds should show. And I, I'm not going into that direction to accept, you know, that they are telling, okay, the Trump supporters are the right wing part uh, uh, fellows or supporters. And then the, I don't know the boss of Twitter is a leftist. I don't know what he what 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 in him and his deeds is 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 leftist. I, I would like to see that. The last question about the Trump. You think he's going to establish a new party, party of patriots or patriotic party? Uh, look, we, we are missing evidences, so we we are guessing. You know, so so it's practically that that you that that you take me to a room, you know, and you switch off the light or someone switch off the light. And apparently there is an elephant in this room. And now you are telling me, okay, touch here, touch there, you know, so I don't know, I mean, which part of the elephant we touch, you know, if I touch his ear, I would say, okay, oh, it's a big eagle, you know, if we get into his, you know, tail, we would say, oh, it's a big piton, a snake, you know. Uh, so, so basically, it's, it's, it's a guessing game. But what we can reconstruct, you know, from, from this uh, 
a feeling of Republicans when 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 this capital charade was taking place, and then in aftermath, and then impeachment or no uh, 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 processing of Trump or no, I think that some signal was going to Republicans wanted to wash their hands, which is okay. Uh, once you lose election, practically you should quit from all positions, and that's in every party. You know, you lose election. You, you offer resignation and you are practically forgotten. You go into a board of company X, you know, and that's it, you know. And sometimes in 10 years time, you, you make, I don't know, memoirs and then you promote book. This is usually the life of the, of the leaders of the parties who lost elections. But basically, I think uh, they wanted to wash the hands and, and it could be that he was frightening them because he apparently has, has managed a base uh, so that uh, that he would create a new party, and definitely both parties, this bipartisanism as a part of integral part of political system, is also in a deep crisis. I think Trump had a nerve to understand those hardworking people who are not managing, even having you know a couple having three jobs per definition. Those people, you know, which which the coastal arrogant, you know, white, overpaid people usually call, call the flyover countries or flyover states. You know, they, they never traveled. They don't know how it looks like, you know, around Rocky Mountain, how people are living. Those are neg neglected portions of the country. And now they are shocked that this America exists. I think the shock was actually since 2016. Trump was, of course, trying to desperately win and he understood the sentiments of those losers in the United States. Those, let's say, low to mid-qualified people who were hardworking people, who are not understanding globalizations, who are losers of globalization, and who practically pay the costs of the, of the capital that at certain point of time identified coastal areas of China as its own industrial suburbia. And then this suburbia started to have political agenda. And then it was a problem. And then they delegated to all of us. They said, okay, boycott China. I'm sorry, but you never asked me, you know, when you when you wanted to outsource all your businesses and yield enormous profits from these coastal areas. It's not China. It's coastal areas of China, which are considered by Japan and the West, by, by G7 countries primarily as urban suburbia. You know, when you go out of Sarajevo, once upon a time, when we've been normal industrialized country, that was Blajuj. You don't put things into Sarajevo, you put them outside. So that was industrial suburbia. Every country, every city has this, you know. So practically that was happened. And then those losers, he understood because he had some talents to understand. And then the coastal four or five cities, they didn't like the picture, which is the real true picture of their country. They don't like it. Aris, let's go to the lighter topic. Okay. What is coronavirus? What what is? I think I mean in the end, you know, so so they uh, of course uh, again, so so I'm 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 uh, as the saying goes, you know, so I'm stupid lawyer, so I don't know much of the biology and chemistry. Uh, uh, I mean, of course, I, as a, someone who, who, who likes to know things, you know, to be informed, I, I, I know beats here and there, but uh, not enough, you know, to give, uh, let's say, the firm and, uh, and conclusive answer to it. But whatever it is, you know, so, 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 so uh, uh, we see that basically it's a problem of the cognitive crisis. So we have, uh, uh, they, they are fundamental oxymorons, you know, so we talk about the masks and actually we are not having uh, 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 any masks, we have a ribbon over our face because the mask, I served in Yugoslav army long ago, you know, 40 years ago, and we really, the uh, 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 atomic, biological and chemical protection units, you know, that, that that's what I served in army and even I was deceived, you know, by all those things of, of masks and I said, masks, mask is not that, mask has to cover your cheeks, your eyes, your ears, you know, this is a mask and has to have a two filters, you know, one for in, one for out, this is a mask, this what we have is a ribbon, is nothing, you know, this is one oxymoron and then we have, 
you know, so 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 practically people are talking, are you for vaccine? Are you not for vaccine? You know, I see I see TV show. There is no TV show in which people are not asked about that. Those are personal things, you know. So it's like asking me what I've been eating, what are my sexual preferences. You don't talk, you know, which kind of color, which color of underwear you have right now. It's like, you know, it's a very sensitive question, which, you know, I would ask, you know, uh, I would I would answer with a contra question to the those hosts of the TV shows. I would say, okay, why do you ask me? Are you paid? Are you forced, you know, in chief, to ask me that question? Why this, you know, so like a plebiscite, you have to answer that question. But the fundamental point, you know, we have the experimental phase of something which people claim to be vaccine. But right now, you know, because I mean, and you've been you've been tirelessly talking about this. So if you go to the Pfizer site, you will see the experimental phase will be finished by the summer of now of this year. So it, that means in six months. Moderna is a company that has never produced any uh, any drug, any medicament. Medicament. It's it's not serious to to trust, you know, to to company which actually was not established even in the shoe making, you know, such important issue as this is as as the public health is. So practically, the question is not am I for vaccine or against vaccine. The fundamental question is actually, am I for the experimental biological substance or not? And for this, we have a clear answer. I don't even know, need to answer to that. And this is also for our viewers, you know, to ease their pain. We have so-called Nierberg code, because during the Nazi time of Germany, there were inhuman treatment of prisoners, of Jews, of others, you know, political opponents and others, communists, uh, homosexuals, others, so who were forced actually into experiments. And uh, as a part of the Nierberg trials, which was then creating the uh, essential part of the Human Rights Charter, an European Charter of Human Rights, which is the integral part of EU Constitution. EU Constitution is a unique constitution, which as its own integral part has a Charter on Human Rights. And European Charter is a part of the, of the, of the universal one. And this is actually the peak of humanity. This is the moment when we really became human. When, when humans humanize themselves, this is a charter. And this charter, the fundamental layers of the charter are Nirberg principles and Nirberg trials and the Tokyo trials to the Nazi crimes and to, to Far East crimes. So practically, vaccine or not, Sam, I love vaccines. I'm vaccinated all over. I'm so thankful. But this is not a vaccine. This is experimental biological agent. And this actually answer is in Nirberg code. This is forbidden, for God's sakes. And if we violate this, we have violated everything, every entire vertical of humanity that we have built. And this is what, what should be known. What we are wearing is not a mask, and what and the false question, you know, that, that, that uh, uh, if we are for vaccine or not. Not implying, you know, people who are having you know, deficiencies in the immunity system, uh, people who are having the allerg allergical uh, reactions to any ingredients, you know, so we, we, they have to be extra cautious who have some other diseases and so on and so forth. But the fundamental answer to the question of the vaccine is we are not having vaccine. This is an experimental biological substance. So once the vaccine comes, I will eagerly, you know, discuss this, but it's it's still far, far away from it. Now, you have probably heard about the decision by the Bosnian Constitutional Court. Yes. On December 22nd, 2020, in which they're saying it was unconstitutional by a small group of people from the executive branch to enforce measures like wearing the masks and forbidding the movement, the freedom of movement. How would you comment on that? I think it's excellent constitutional decision and uh, I, was, I was very happy when I saw that they endorsed this in the courts are obliged 
basically by the by the constitution and in every constitution in the preambular part of constitution is right for health it's one of the fundamental rights and basically you know the hypocrite and and the, practically the the common knowledge or the the logic is telling you the cure should not be more dangerous than the illness itself and apart from all of it you know we should we should actually engage ourselves in the all sectoral discussions on different issues. We have here now in Austria and in Germany and Switzerland, you know, in this, uh, let's say, German speaking Central Europe, uh, 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 a portion of, 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 of Europe, we have alarming increase of cases of the of the minor of the minors getting into into deep preclinical depression. So the kids of 20 to 14, and the trouble is, you know, they are not any longer for the for the for the uh, psychologist. They are for psychiatry because psychologists are actually fixing the social unfitting. You know, so you are not perfectly fitting socially. So so psychologists are helping. Psychiatrists are treating diseases. So those are diseases already, and the trouble is that you don't know how to treat because this portion, that young cohort of people were never affected with the depression. They have been never uh, behind the bar and there are, there are no books about this. You know, the kids were spared in every war. You know, they've been running around. Uh, uh, they, they, they never represented any, let's say, a military target or a threat or anything, you know. And practically now the medicine cannot answer. They don't know how to treat them. Kids are at home, kids are deprived from everything, and this is pushed away from the from the debate. We have to open the thorough debate and cross-sectoral debate. And every life situation brings troubles. They are, they are also, let's say, some dangers. When we go to supermarket, when you go to Granup down, you know, and to buy milk, you know, there is a danger. Because if you take elevator, there is a danger. If you go with the stairs, you know, there is a there is a there is a statistical a probability, you know, zero point something that you might break a leg, okay? With the elevator, if you go out, you know that you could be hit by car, by the, the by the drunken neighbor, uh, if you can be poisoned by the milk that you bought, and so on and so forth, you know, that you can get, I don't know, uh, 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 some illness, you know, from the from the banknotes which are having some dirt and, and some, some, some germs or, or bacteria on the head. So practically living is a risk. But what we have to judge is actually to to give to be to be properly judging, you know, the risks and to say uh, plus and, and, and minuses. And you know, so we had war in the, unfortunately in former Yugoslavia. We didn't know what what to do with with with, with such a successful model. So so we started destroying each other and killing. And now we are living in denial for 30 years. But irrespectively from 90s, you know, in 40s when the war was taking place, you know, everything was going normal. You have soldiers, you know, you had so-called uh, the factories of the special purpose in which females were working, sometimes also the the elder uh, teenagers, and sometimes bombs were coming, you know, some casualties were, were happening, but life was going normally on, you know, and nobody was starting news, you know, for 11 months we are starting news with the number of infected people, you know. Which whatever is happening, you know, infected, are, are, are symptomatically, symptomatically, is it fake, is it not, you know. The point is that the media is starting and finishing news with frightening people. And one of the fundamental, also for the, for the viewers, guys, when you listen to media or before you listen to media, see the ownership structure of this media. Unfortunately, we, can, we enter the, the age in which we cannot trust media. Check, check the ownership structure of media and then take them seriously. Or take them as much as, 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 as they deserve seriously. Good. <clears throat> Let's stay on international scene. What do you think, for how long the dollar will remain the leading world currency? You American, mean the U.S. dollar? American dollar. Uh, 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 United, 
I mean, you you know it. I think you referred in your in your uh, also in your let's say talks earlier. Uh, you you referred to that. You know, so so we had the Bretton Woods, and then we had so-called Nixon shock, which was practically a collapse, the financial collapse of the United States, which they played very successfully, and then practically the cover for the United States dollar, and I, I was writing even about that. You know, so uh, so the cover is a promise. I mean, money generally, you know, as a, as a, as a general equivalent to all, of all goods, you know, it's a construct of humans. No, no, no other species are having money. You know. I give you or you give me a funny paper, you know, it's a promissory note, you know, so, so and with this funny paper, I promise to you when giving to, to, to you this, you know, for services or for, for some goods that you give to me, that you will take this paper somewhere else and that you might get also services and goods for that. It's a promise, you know, it's actually, it's a construct. It does not exist. It, it, it's a fantasy and fantasy based and the banking and everything, I mean, banking sector and everything, it functions actually on tomorrow that nobody have ever seen. That when I give you something, you know that tomorrow you might be getting double. This is a stock exchange, this is investment fund, this is money, you know, all this. Uh, banks are functioning with this. So we humans, you know, we have this imaginary, uh, let's say, ability, you know, that, that's also cognitivity, how we developed into that direction. So basically, since Nixon shock, United States were not promising oil, but they promised the, the, the sea lanes, of tomorrow will be free for the free flow of oil. This is what US dollar promises. And this is the synergy between the, the Pentagon and explains why they are massively, you know, investing into, into military, why all the Hollywood movies are full of, of, of this, uh, let's say, aggressivity, you know. Uh, one guy, you know, someone calls uh, his girlfriend a uh, bad name in the first minute of the movie, and the rest of the movie he kills half and demolishes half of the city, you know. The, the, those are the movies, you know. Rambo was, you know, um, maltreated, you know, in the first uh, uh, movie of Rambo, you know, by this local uh, police guy, you know, and then he demolished, you know, half of the U United States Army, you know. The, 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 this is the, you know, the narrative of the movie, you know. You do me something bad, you know, and then it's a, it's excuse for me to to destroy everything. So it's 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 basically a a, a story of 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 this aggressivity and this uh, this uh, how shall I say uh, uh, exp expansionistic uh, point of view. Why? Because United States is a peripheral country, you know. Everything, you know, so so if the, some Martians are coming on the planet, they would most probably base everything on, on Eurasian or on the Middle East, because this is the, 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 the place that connects three continents, you know. And that's what I'm dealing in, in, in the books, you know, so I don't want to kill the, the, the time here, uh, which I call anthropogeographic inversion, that the center is peripherized and that the geographic peripheries are centers of the world. So we are, we are, I mean, our world is led by Canada, United States, Britain, Japan, Australia, Singapore, you know, South Africa, the, the, the most organized country of Africa is South Africa. When you see the glance on a glance, when you glance the map, you will see that they are peripheral countries and the misery where the, the refugees are coming from. They are coming from the center of this planet, from Syria, from Iraq, from Afghanistan, you know. So we peripheral center, and we, center, we, we, we created center from the geographic peripheries, from the absolute peripheries of this planet. And of course, that hostility, this intrusion always comes from periphery, this aggressivity, because we in the center, we live very nicely. And that's also a story about the Balkans, you know. We live the situated, non-slaved based uh, world, you know, very nicely. And every, as you as you say, and Domago also mentioned, that every newcomers were were practically genocidal because they had they had to actually create the need for themselves. We lived absolutely nicely, you know, situated and practically uh, self-reliant uh, and 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 with the, with enough esteem, you know. And those peripheral were pushing. So practically, as long as the United States is able to project its power, especially on the seas, dollar will remain. Uh, will remain. 
And now I think that the, the, the entire, you know, model of capitalism is coming to an end. Those are, uh, let's say, very disturbing news about Internet of Bodies, about uh, uh, the, the real uh, sense of the 5G, of artificial intelligence, and unfortunately tendency of, uh, of humans, you know, when they come to a possession, to understanding, or they believe they understand technology, they started, uh, uh, let's say, unselectively deploying technique. When we understood, you know, that, that we can create the pill to control uh, birth, you know, we, 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 we quickly jump into this, you know, and then the two generations of females were either crippled, you know, for life, or they've been b bringing offsprings which had uh, 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 deficiencies, you know. The same happened with, the, with, the, uh, with those legendary hairsprays, because in the 50s, the hairsprays for ladies, that was a revolutionary event, you know. But nobody was bugging actually too much with the very aggressive substances that were making those, uh, let's say, chemicals aerosolically dispersable. So they put very aggressive substances which were actually eating our ozones. And, and then DDT, I'm still, uh, I'm old enough, you know, to remember tuberite, you know, we had this uh, with the potatoes, you know, the, the DDT that, that, that was so, you know, I would say even aggressively introduced, you know, into agriculture, which was practically uh, absolutely toxic, you know, and the lands are still con contaminated for 50 years. So that means every technology we acquired or we believed we acquired, we deployed. And then firstly, we ignored, you know, negativity, and then we relativized the negative news, and then, and then we started excusing ourselves and telling, oh, we didn't know, you know, but always same people. Same people were very much to, to make, uh, let's say, the regime change in Iraq. Then when, when everything turned wrong, they've been firstly ignoring, then they, they've been relativizing bad news. And then we've been having again them in the newspapers how sorry and how pity they are. Those people who were correct, they are never in newspapers. You know, if you are wrong, you should go to jail, not to newspapers. I'm sorry. Why should I read your news, your, your, your interview? You should be jailed. You know, so, so that's that happens also with the with the technologies as well. So I believe that artificial intelligence has a possibility to eliminate humans, you know, because we have two powers: the physical power, which machines all already eliminated us from, the horses were slaughtered, and so on and so forth. And then we have the, the mental, intellectual power. And artificial intelligence, the powerful algorithms. Algorithms which were not created by private sector of United States and Western Europe, but by the public monies. This is also one of the fundamental fallacies. The famous Google algorithm has been not made or has been not invented by the Google's money, by the private money. This was the taxpayer's money. The same applies for GPS that this is used. And same applies for so many solutions, as, as same applies for the fundamental medical drugs. So, and this is the tragic of the PPPs. One of the things to reconsider is also this magic PPP, the private public partnership, in which public are taking risks and give money, but the benefits and the profits are taken by the private companies. And we are running the globe seeing so-called economic, economic crisis of 2008 does not exist. It was 500 people given by incompetence and greed who were sitting in the city of London and New York Stock Exchange. 500 people with the names. There were no global crisis. There were no financial crisis. It was a misconduct of 500 people. So what was our response was PPP. Also now with, the, with actually those solutions to the so-called virus of or C C19, we have the same. The liability is excluded from the companies, but they take profits, you know. This way the, 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 the world will not run. And then practically this competing over the virus, you know, it looks like an arms race. I, I don't see any cooperation and I don't see also the if we have a global trouble with the epi ep epidemics, you know, I don't see a fundamental problem why we are not gathering all or the best, you know, biological or chemical or, or pharmacological science experts. We come to the best possible va vaccine and we openly disclose actually how it is, how it is made. And we have locally in every country we have factory that is producing it for itself. So it's a patent free if you are serious about this planet.
Everything below that is actually feeding conspiracy theories. Everything below that, everything below actually discussion on the ways how we can how, how we can combat anything. You know, it's not monochromatic. It's not new drugs. We have the old drugs which we can which we can remandate it. We have we have forgotten what is health. What is I mean, you've been talking so often about this, about uh, about general prevention. What we can do to boost our immunity. We we have to uh, help our immunity not to go against or to intrude the immunity. And that's our general principle. I think you've been telling to this, you know, instead of going into anti-gravity physics, you know, what do we do? We construct rockets. And this idea of creating actually stronger force than the gravitational force, you know, we kill force by, by force, you know, so you are not surfing on a wave, you surf against the wave, like a, like a bird, you know, flying against the wind. Or it just tilts with the wind, you know. So that's, the, I mean, we can observe the nature and learn from it. So practically, creating a rocket to solve the gravitational force, this is invented in China, I think, four or five thousand years ago. So we are still based, you know, philosophically, you know, I mean, in, in, the, in the philosophy towards the science, we are still tapping, you know, where we've been four or five thousand years ago. So instead of anti-gravity ships, you know, so we have, and the same goes, uh, so, so the same approach, same philosophy behind, you know, uh, our understanding of technology is also with the vaccine. So we should fight, you know, instead of our immunity. No, we should just help our immunity. We should ask our immunity what it needs. So it's very simple, but we are departing from it. So in that sense, it's a cognitive crisis. And in the end, you know, so there are different stories. Is it chipping? Is it actually instead of vaccine, we are getting an implant, the GMO implant? Uh, is it six uh, six uh, G uh, having an interface with something that isotope with, which we will get? Is it reducing the population? Is it this or that? You know, all that goes into that direction, and it will not end up without the massive actually annihilation. This is a very dangerous road in which actually we would we would we would end up in a nuclear holocaust because at certain point someone will trigger the button. Anis, I have two more questions for you. Okay. First one, you've been writing about the non-alignment movement. Of course, when it uh, showed up at the international scene back in 1950s and then 60s, 70s, 80s, it was totally different world. We had Cold War, we had East and West. Nowadays, the time has changed. We have big tech, for example, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft and Apple. Each one is worth more than one thousand billion dollars each. We have big pharma. Again, we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars, including the one you mentioned, Moderna, which in 10 years has not produced a single product. Then we have big media, and we can see effects of their work in the last year, that they were able to brainwash billions of people. So it's a different world. Do you still see a chance for the idea of the non-alignment movement? I do. I do definitely. And uh, I think we have to have a, a, a third third way because uh, we are getting into, uh, again, into binary categorization. And apparently China is, is competing to get this place what was the Soviet Union. With the difference, Soviet Union was competing with the United States and the one block and, and the other block on the other side, you know, the Warsaw Pact countries and the NATO countries. So they've been co competing geopolitically all over the planet, but also ideologically. China is not competing in a full sense ideologically. Those are the modification of the capitalism. It's a more state Kenyanistic uh, capitalism with the state intervention, with the state control over the capitalistic system. And on the other side, uh, absolutely free riding economy allegedly free riding economy. Although, as you mentioned, pesos, you know, you can't earn 11 in 11 months, you know, hundreds or tens of 
of billions. I even don't know what is the wealth increase, you know. So everything goes down. The economies, you know, the volume of economies is shrinking, but the stock exchange listed companies, you know, the top companies are getting up. This is not capitalism. I mean, th that also has to be clear with the two viewers, you know, and I even, I don't want now to throw the names, you know, I, I directly talk with Piketty and, for example, with Verufax, I ask them that question and they confirm this is not capitalism, this is something else. It's like a tech uh, feudalism or the slavery system or I don't know what. So we fundamentally, uh, for any system, you know, you need you need acceptance. And if 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 the belief goes into technology, which will actually tranquilize, you know, the the, the popular uh, discontent, you know, this is fallacy. This is very very tricky, dangerous road. This is walking on a very very thin ice. Uh, what what I'm predicting, and I think you are also telling this uh, very often, is actually that people are still sitting in pajama. And you know, for 45 years, like you, you know, I'm reading history books. I have never seen in history books that people were winning their fundamentals, that someone else is fighting for you. I have never seen this in history. And that you sit in pyjama, you watch Netflix, and you are getting more and more human rights. I have never seen this. You have to go and stand your line and fight and, give, and be ready to give your life. Even animals are doing this, you know, when animal, every, even in a cattle, you know, the cow, when cow feels to, so stressed, even the stupid, nice, and, and let's say, mild and beautiful eyes looking cow, you know, even cow at certain point understands that she's stressed, that she's just a, a milking and the food product, and she starts committing suicide. The cat, the, 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 the uh, uh, cow is, is, is actually hitting their head against the wall and, and she commits suicide. So even animals, I mean, it's not the smartest animal, you know, we must say. It's, it's really cute, you know, when you see those, this look that, that that cow gives you, you know. But actually, even that not really very bright animal understands at a certain point of time that life without freedom makes no sense and is ready to give her life for freedom, you know. It says, says, okay, so you took everything from me, but at least I have I have the last act of freedom, and that means over my life. So I will take my life off, you know, in a desperation, you know, to regain my freedom. So I will die as free. So I think that people will still need time, but once this happens, you know, uh, we will have we will have serious, uh, let's say, rethinking, and we would have also some investigations how we came. Uh, uh, to this place where we where we came, but certain certain uh, uh, let's say uh, certain uh, circles that have made a lot of money uh, are getting very nervous on this, you know. And then people are, uh, that are talking who is behind. Uh, it's a speculative part, but let's see who is winning from this situation. Out of G7 countries or OECD countries plus G20 countries, only China was having surpluses for 2020. We, still, we, st we are still waiting for conclusive economic data of the 2020, but the preliminary results of the first three quarters are telling that China was only having the surplus. Some of the tiger economies in Latin America and Africa, especially in Asia, for the first time in several decades, I think you've been also mentioning this, were getting the negative. So, so the economy started shrinking, like Indonesia. Indonesia was booming practically for 30 years. Uh, Thailand and, I don't know, the Philippines, uh, Malaysia, you know, many, Vietnam, uh, Korea, both Koreas practically. Uh, so, so they've been booming and it stopped after and as we said, you know, the IPE and the, and the NASDAQ uh, indexes uh, in United States. So in, in Britain, you know, the economies are shrinking, but you have some of the top listed companies getting getting value. So we see who does not really like to change anything. You know, and then the ordinary citizenry should be practically asking themselves, you know, so is my life worth, you know, sitting and fighting in pyjama, you know, and waiting someone else to fix my problems, you know, be it Djokovic or, or, or Trump, you know, 
now both are gone, you know, so you have to see yourself and you have to ask yourself what what we what what do I want from myself? So how who am I and what do I want? And especially for my children. Okay, and the last question for today. Anis, where do you see the hope for humanity? Again, hope is not in, in, in Djokovic winning, you know, that's not hope, you know, and you sit at home and you watch the TV, you know, and hope is in you, you know, you have to find the hope, you have to find the source and the inspiration in yourself. So who asks you, you know, so what drives you? What drives me, you know, so practically we find the source and we are reinforcing ourselves from an inside, you know, who was actually running all this all this with the pyramids, who was fighting, you know, with the Bosnian, uh, with the project of Bosnian pyramids, you know, against all odds, against all actually in, entrapments that, that were placed against you, the ridiculing and, and, and all obstacles and, and you know, the, the, the troubles that, that, that have been made for you. It's, it's your cognitive mind because you set up your mind and then the acting was was following so each and every of us should should be doing this Goethe is telling nobody every generation has to fight for its own freedom we have our own you know sources we don't need to go for Goethe, but it's a very good luminary example you know so practically uh, i saw that actually now there is a serbo croatian edition of thomas piketty book I believe that for, for 60, 70 years, besides eventually Stiglitz, we didn't have a better economic, actually, uh, theory and the view on the economic development. I recommend people to read this. I recommend people to uh, move away from, from fast and, and uh, let's say, poisonous media to go into classics, you know. If they are living in the Yugoslav space, we have beautiful... Uh, 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 writers and the poets, you know, Vasco Popa, Magdizar, Andrich, Krelja, especially Krelja, but elsewhere, you know, so, so they, are, they are brilliant, brilliant writers, and we can find the, the original wisdom, you know, and this verticality of humans, you know, in, in, a, in a classical pieces of literature. Be it Dante, be it uh, Dostoevsky, be it uh, Jack Kerouac, you know, Ken Kesey, whomever, you know, so in a way, the modern and, and pre-modern classics, I would I would go into that and spending as as you are advocating all the time, spending more time with ourselves without gadgets and in the nature. If they can't visit uh, Visoko, they can visit any any forest and and the phones at home. This toxic poison, you know, living and 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 actually learning to to live without that, you know, living in at home or in 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 the car. If you go to the forest. Uh, for security reasons, you need a phone, you know, or also purchasing old phones. Why not the the the, the G one uh, one G or or two G? All those phones, you know, like Motorola, this old phone. It's also not bad to have for emergency call. And and relearning actually and revisiting the fundamentals, what is very important for each and every of us, and finding you know solution and the hope inside of cells. Uh, hope is not outside, hope is inside. So it's a cognitive insight, actually, that each and every of, or katarza, as you call it. People believe, you know, especially that, that we have this Eastern touch of, of, of this uh, melancholy, you know, the Slavic and the, and the Oriental touch of, of fatalism. Uh, but people are forgetting one thing. Karma goes together with Dharma. You know, there is like a faith, but there is also a pathway which you are influencing, which you are projecting, and that's Dharma. So Karma and Dharma are actually two, two sides of, of, of hand, you know. So you say, okay, it's Karma, it's my faith, you know. It's in the hands of God. Nothing is in the hands of God. It's in your hands, you know. God is, is, it, is, a, is a neutral agent, you know. He's not, he's not taking, or it does not take sides, you know. So you are creating Dharma and Karma. So that means actually, in order to have karma, dharma is necessary. So if you are in pyjama and waiting, if this is your dharma that you opted, so your karma will also be pyjama, nothing else. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that this was great. I thank you for the enlightening... In so I can go back to pyjama now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I wish you good luck and uh, you're always welcome to Visoko. Thank no, you, Thank Alex. you. Thank you. See you, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Right. Bye, -bye. Bye.
Audio Jungle.